Hello everyone. Welcome to the final video in this series on Symantec Backup Exec Server 2010. In this video we will cover how to configure Backup Exec Server using Nextstar's best practices. In this lesson we will first demonstrate how to install a remote Windows agent and discuss the use of logon accounts within Backup Exec. Then we will create a complete array of media sets to organize and retain the backup data. We will move on to show the configuration of both backup to disk folders and a tape library. Next, we will create an exclusive backup selection list to identify all the backup data. If you are not familiar with an exclusive list, please refer to the first video in the series. Lastly, we will create a complete set of backup jobs that will tie everything together. Let's get started configuring a backup system using Symantec Backup Exec 2010. To begin, launch the Backup Exec user interface. Once in the interface, we will select the Tools menu and install agents and remote media servers on other servers. Now we will select Add and then Add Single Server. We are going to select Remote Agent for Windows Systems. Next, we will input the fully qualified domain name of our server as well as administrative credentials to perform the install. Please note that these credentials are only used for this install process. Next, we will select the Advanced Open File option which enables the backup of files that are open and in use. The next screen lists all of the media servers that the remote agent's information will be published to. On the next screen, Backup Exec will evaluate the server and prepare for the installation. On this screen, we will see a summary and the option to begin the install. Once the install is complete, the agent will be running on the remote system and you will be able to incorporate it directly into the backup scheme. Now we can return to the main backup exec interface. To begin working with backup exec itself, we will start by discussing logon accounts and how backup exec will access all of the required data. Select the network menu and then select logon accounts. This window will display all of the user accounts that Backup Exec will use to access the data within the infrastructure. It is best to have as few accounts as you can get away with and that those accounts have the fewest privileges required to access the data. We will only be using the Backup Exec system logon account which is the service account underscore Backup Exec. We have given this account local administrator access on the backup server and backup operator access on the domain controller. If we were including other systems such as Linux or VMware systems, we might need to add additional accounts to provide access to those systems. Lastly, these logon accounts need to be separate from user accounts and need to have strong passwords since they will have access to all of the critical data in the infrastructure. Now let's begin creating media sets to keep our backups organized. In the Media tab, we will select New Media Set. First, we will select the name for the media set and then specify an overwrite protection period and an append period. The overwrite protection period is the amount of time that must pass before the data can be overwritten. The append period is a length of time during which the media is allowed to be appended to by another job. For the yearly media, we will not allow it to be overwritten and we will set the append period to be 12 hours. Although the overwrite protection period may vary depending upon different media, we standardize the append period to be 12 hours to only allow backups within a 12 hour time frame to reside on the same media. For example, if your year-end backup consisted of multiple backup exec jobs occurring in sequence, you may want to have all that data from those various jobs appended to the same media. This append period allows for that type of configuration. Now we will create a monthly media set using the same options as the yearly. Next, we will create a Saturday media set 
This one will be overwrite protected for three weeks, and given the average runtime of the job and the window of availability, this protection will allow for three more recent Saturdays to complete before it can be overwritten. We will move on and create a Friday media set, which will be overwrite protected for five days and allow most of the week to pass before Friday can be recycled. Now using Friday as an example, we will create the additional media sets for Monday through Thursday. Now we have a complete library of media sets to keep all the different media organized and retained appropriately. This organization allows backups throughout the week to expire and be overwritten as time goes on, while keeping the monthly and yearly backups for historical recovery purposes. Some may argue that this many media sets is overkill for our particular implementation. It is true that you could achieve the same functionality with fewer media sets. However, if we were configuring our jobs using a tape drive, we would need these media sets to prevent any tapes from being accidentally overwritten. We'd like to keep our design and naming conventions consistent across all media types. Let's move on to configure our devices to store our backup data. Since we are using local disks, we need to configure backup to disk folders. To do this, select the Devices tab, then right click on the media server and select New Backup to Disk Folder. This first backup to disk folder will be for Monday's job, so we will name it accordingly and select the appropriate folder on the backup drive. Take note that the maximum file size is 4 gigabytes. We will then designate a low disk space threshold of 5 gigabytes to allow for a buffer of space before the entire disk is consumed. With all those selections made, we will then click OK to create the new backup to disk folder. Using these specifications, we will create the other folders for the weekly backup jobs. Now we will create a folder for the monthly job. Notice that this folder will be located on the Y drive instead of the Z. Lastly, we will create a yearly backup to disk folder. This also follows the same conventions, however, this data will be stored on the X drive rather than Y or Z. Now that we have all our backup to disk folders created, we can move on to the next step. But before we do, I would like to take a moment to demonstrate how we would configure a tape library in accordance with this scheme. For this, let's take a look at a different server running Backup Exec 12.5. This server has a robotic tape library with 20 available slots. In order to control which tapes get used for which jobs, we will have to partition the tape library. Right click on the tape library and select configure partitions. We will be presented with a list of all the slots in the library. To designate a partition, click the start and end point for each group of slots. This allows us to divide up the tape library into smaller segments and assign specific jobs to specific partitions. Once we are finished partitioning the library, accepting the changes will create a new device for each partition. Now you can configure your backup jobs to use the specific partitions rather than the tape library as a whole. Now let's go back to our demonstration server. Please join us for part two of this video series.